Hi, welcome back to our discussion about chapter 10, the capital investment decision. What we're going to talk about in chapter 10 is uh, a few things, but mainly what we're going to be doing is bringing together all of the, our previous discussion um, from chapter 9 and some from chapters 2 and 3, uh, and we're going to analyze a project for a firm. And so by bringing all that together, what I mean is we're going to start from scratch. We're going to think about how a project is uh, proposed. We're going to think about how the cash flows are estimated for a project. We're going to do some estimation of our own. Uh, and then we're going to evaluate the project using the rules that we just finished uh, learning in Chapter 9. Namely, the net present value and internal rate of return rules. So the key things that we need to cover in this chapter um, is we need to discuss what relevant cash flows are and that means as a firm is evaluating a project we need to make sure that the cash flows that we associate with that project are the correct set of cash flows on which to make a decision about the project otherwise we could lead ourselves to making a decision using um, an incorrect set of cash flows and then by definition we've made an incorrect decision and then we're going to talk about some different ways to arrive at our estimates of cash flow in other words uh, how do we get to cash flow? And then finally, we'll finish by working a bunch of big examples, uh, covering sort of different, uh, different ideas of what projects uh, might look like in the firm uh, and how we evaluate them. So we'll start by talking about relevant cash flows. And relevant cash flows essentially are the cash flows that matter to the firm or to the project and those for the cash flows that matter are only the ones that will occur if the project is, a, is accepted. And this is a really important idea, this idea that we only want to consider cash flows that occur if the project is undertaken and not cash flows that don't. And this can be harder than you might think. So what we want to look for, in other words, imagine the case that we have a firm that is completely new. So I want to open up a, a burger shop in Boone. Right? Totally new project. I'm going to open up a restaurant, start selling burgers. Every cash flow that I have to, uh, that I estimate uh, or I undertake in, in, in under that project is a relevant cash flow because every single one is relevant to the project at hand. Nothing has ever gone on before. So the cash flows that I incur for uh, you know, renting a, a, a location and hiring employees, paying bills, uh, sourcing materials, uh, and then all the revenues that come in from the project, those are all relevant. They have nothing else to do. On the other hand, if I'm going to open up a second burger shop, after my first restaurant has really done well, I'm going to open up a second location. Some of the cash flows for the new location may not be, uh, or, or let me say, some of the cash flows for the total company may not be relevant to the opening of the new location. For instance, I might use uh, accounting, an, accounting, an accounting team that I already use for my first restaurant to, to do the accounting for my second restaurant. And if I didn't take the new project, I would still have to pay those accountants because they're already doing work for me. I may hire a new accountant so then the, the, the salary for the new employee is relevant, but the salary for the old employees, even if they do some of the work, is not relevant. So the sum of these cash flows are called the incremental cash flows for the for the project. And in other words, these are the firms that the the cash flows that the firm incurs incrementally, if and only if we take the project. Now this comes about from an idea called the standalone principle, and the standalone principle says that we should be able to analyze each different investment for the firm in isolation from all of the other investments of the firm simply by focusing on these relevant or incremental cash flows. In fact, one of the ways that we can think about a firm is simply as a collection of, of a bunch of mini projects. Even a firm as big as Amazon or Microsoft, we can think about it simply as a collection of all the different investment projects that Microsoft has going on. And we should be able to separate with some degree of accuracy the relevant cash flows that are associated with each individual project. And then we should be able to analyze and think about each project on its own basis. So the way that we analyze each project first off is by asking cash flow by cash flow more or less, will this cash flow occur only if we accept the project? And if the answer is yes, we, we take it. 
just an incremental cash flow? If the answer is no, we don't include it in our analysis. It's like the accounting team at my burger shop. These salaries are gonna to need to be paid anyway. And if I have to pay them anyway, they aren't relevant to the project at hand. And if the answer is some part of it, then we include the part that occurs because of the project and we don't include the part that occurs because, um, uh, because it occurs for the rest of the firm already. So another way to think about this is imagine that we're operating our, our bicycle shop. Right? I'm manufacturing bicycles, I've got a plant running, I've got machinery, I've got two shifts of employees coming in uh, early in the morning and one coming in in the afternoon, uh, and, and they're working eight-hour shifts, uh, so we're making lots of bicycles at our machines, and we are trying to evaluate an investment project that will require us to produce a new type of bicycle. And because that new type of bicycle is going to require all the machinery that we're using before, we're not going to be able to operate the, we're not going to be able to build those bikes at the same time as the current shifts that we're running. We're going to have to start up a third shift. So I'm going to have to work a, a third eight hour shift overnight. And during that eight hour shift, we'll retask all the machines to make this new type of bicycle. Right. What we need to think about here is which cash flows of this new a proposed investment are only going to occur if we take the project. So think, let's just think about the costs for a minute. The costs of operating my machine plant right now, well, I've got to pay rent. Let's say I'm paying rent on the, on, the, on the warehouse space. I've got maintenance costs on my machinery. I've got labor costs on my two shifts of employees. I've got electricity, other utility costs, right, uh, for keeping my plant open. I've got accounting costs because I've got an you know, accounting team that's working to do all that. Now, analyzing which of those costs are going to be relevant to a new project. So here's my new project. I'm going to open up a third shift. Because it's a third shift, I can't use my current employees. So my new employees, the cash flow, the labor cost of my new employees is going to be a relevant cost because these are new employees and I'm only going to have to pay them if I actually undertake the project. Right? Remember again, we're just at analysis stage yet. Nothing has happened. So all of this is only if we take the project will this occur. That's labor costs on my new employees. Utilities. Well, now some of my utility bill, two thirds of it in fact, because I'm already running two eight hour shifts, two thirds of my utility bill, if I pick up a third shift, will already occur no matter whether I take the project or not. I already have to pay electricity and, and internet and water, etc. All of those utility costs, they have to be paid. So the only relevant part of my utility bill is going to be this new portion of the utility bill that is directly attributable to, to having a third shift open. So I've got to have my lights on for another eight hours, water, internet, all that stuff. Well, actually not internet, right? Because we don't pay internet uh, by part, we pay it by month. So the internet bill is not relevant at all. I couldn't assign any of that cost to the new project, but I could assign one third of my new light bill, one third of my new water bill, uh, and, uh, and uh, new employees, uh, all as relevant costs. Accounting team, I probably can't unless it requires me to hire a new accounting person and then I could attribute that part of the accounting salary base to my new project. My accounting team is probably stable here. They are just going to account for in a new project line. That's not a, an, a, an enormous amount of work. You just add another couple um, Excel, Excel sheets to your, to your normal accounting team. Uh, so you probably can't assign any of your accounting labor uh, to the project. I can't assign any of my rent to the project because I pay rent on the building whether I use that building during the overnight shift or not. So the rent is not a relevant cash flow for this new project, not in the way we want. My machinery cost, my depreciation, I could, I could include some of that machinery cost, my maintenance cost, my depreciation. Again, I could, I, because I'm now using it for an additional 33%, I could, I could, attribute some of those costs to my, uh, to my new project if I take it. But the rest of it, in other words, I can't attribute all the depreciation, I can't attribute all of the maintenance costs because some of that is going to go on if I don't take the project. So these are the questions we have to think about when we're analyzing a new project. And again, this is only if we're analyzing a new project for an already existing firm. We have to make sure that the cash flows we assign to the new project are relevant and incremental to that project only. If it's a new firm, every, every cash flow is relevant because there isn't anything else to attribute it to. Anything we take on, anything we receive, all of that comes from the project and only the project.